Hi everyone and welcome back to the shop. I'm calling this project a classic writing desk and I've designed it for my wife's new office. It's 26 inches deep by 64 inches wide so a nice big work surface and I've designed this video to really help guide you through the project and you can find a link to the plans for this project down in the description below. The legs for this project come from Van Dyke's Restores and they are the sponsor of this video and I'll have a link to the legs as well. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting with the front of the apron and since the drawer fronts will be cut out of the apron to create continuous wood grain, I'll make the first rip at three quarters of an inch. This piece is for the top of the apron. The second rip is for the drawer fronts and I'll make that rip at three and a quarter. The last rip is for the bottom of the apron. I'll make this cut at one inch and that'll give me a little room for the bead molding profile that I'll add later. After ripping the parts to width, I squared up the ends and then set up a stop block and cut the pieces a half inch larger than their final measurement. I ripped the front apron into three pieces, the top, the center, that's where the drawer fronts will come from, and the bottom. I'll cross cut the drawer fronts out and label them and then join the pieces back together and that will create the drawer openings. Continuous wood grain drawer fronts is a little extra work, but I think it's worth it. My original plan for the desk was to give it a burnt wood finish, but my wife decided that she'd rather have it painted white. If you're planning to paint your desk as well, you can forgo these steps and just go off the measurements that are in the plans. With all the parts cut to size and labeled, I've added a clamp in the center to keep this part here from moving. And now I want to establish just about a 32nd of an inch on each side of the drawer front. So that looks good over here. And I'll bring this piece in like I've already done. You can see my marks here. And then I'll remove the drawer fronts, add a biscuit, and glue the apron together. While the glue's drying on the front apron, I'll rip the sides and back apron to width at five inches. It's been a little more than an hour and now I can take the apron out of the clamps and cut it to length. With the face frame or apron glued up, the next step is to measure over from the drawer opening and make a mark at three inches. You can use a square to square across just to make the line a bit easier to see. You're going to do this on both sides. Cut on this side of the line and that will cut the apron to length. So now if the math has worked out, this should measure 52 and a half. And it's close, it's 52 and 7 sixteenths, so it's a sixteenth of an inch light, and that doesn't matter. What I'm going to do next is take the back apron I've already squared up one side, I'll hold the pieces flush at the end, and this will be the cut for the back apron. As long as the back apron measures the front apron, and they're pretty close to that original measurement of 52 and a half, you're okay. Things can get a little different when you're creating these openings for the drawer fronts because you're moving the pieces in and out a little bit. So a sixteenth of an inch isn't going to matter. So that happens in your project. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that you make the back apron the same length as the front apron. After cutting the back apron to length, I set up a stop block and cut both sides to 17 and a half. The next step is to use the router to cut a bead molding profile at the bottom of the apron. 
I've clamped the front and back of the apron together and I'll do the same thing with the sides. That creates a wider platform and will prevent the router from tipping while I'm cutting the profile. The next step is to drill the pocket holes so I can attach the legs with pocket hole screws. I'll measure in an inch and a quarter on both sides and I'll use that same measurement on both the sides front and back. I'm attaching the front and back aprons to the legs first and I'm using a one inch wooden block that I've clamped to the leg and that will prevent the apron from shifting and hold it in place while I'm driving the pocket hole screws. Now I'm ready to add the drawer runners, and as you can see, I've already added one. And there's a little trick to make sure that the drawer runner is perfectly flush with the drawer opening and square with the back. So we'll go over to the other side of the desk, and I'll show you how to do that. I've ripped the stick at three quarters of an inch, which is the same thickness as the drawer runner. I'll hold the stick flush with the drawer opening, and then use a sharp pencil point or pencil and trace a line. Then I'll take that measurement and it's two and a quarter. Over at the miter saw, I've set up a stop block and I'll cut two blocks at two and a quarter inches, one for the front of the desk and the other one for the back. Now I'll test the fit, and as long as this stick is flush with the opening, that's good. So I'm going to attach this block with a little wood glue and some nails. I cut the runners to size and drilled the pocket holes off camera. Next I'll attach them with a little wood glue and two screws in the front and the back. For the center of the desk, I'll use the same process of using a 3 quarter inch stick on both sides of the drawer openings to mark lines. Next I'll take a measurement from the opposite drawer opening on both sides and cut a stick at that measurement. I'll use that stick to transfer the measurements to the back of the desk. With the drawer runners installed, the next step is what I'm referring to as the drawer slides. You have the bottom and that's what the drawer will run on. And you have the top and that prevents the drawer from tipping forward when it's pulled out of the desk. These two are done, so let's move on to the other side. I'll rip the top slides at 3 quarters by 3 quarters of an inch. The bottom slides will be ripped at 3 quarters by an inch and one thirty second. 
When these pieces are attached, they will sit just a little proud of the drawer opening to create an even reveal at the drawer bottom. Over at the miter saw, I'll square up one side of each piece. I've squared up this side of the bottom drawer slide. I'll hold it tight against the back of the desk and make a mark to cut it to length. I'm attaching the drawer slides to the drawer runners with wood glue and inch and a quarter nails. And I'm making sure that the slide is flush with the bottom of the drawer runner. Here's a close look at how the bottom drawer slide is just a little proud of the drawer opening. This will create an even reveal at the drawer bottom and prevent the drawer front from getting hung up on the face frame. Now it's time to make the drawers. I'll start by ripping an eighth of an inch off the drawer fronts and this will bring them down to three and an eighth. Next I'll rip the drawer sides to the same width of three and an eighth. After squaring up the ends, I'll set up a stop block and cut the sides of the drawers to length. I've got the drawer fronts and drawer sides cut to size. And the next step is to cut the rabbet in the drawer fronts. If you're going to have continuous wood grain, you want to make sure that your drawer fronts are facing up. So these drawer fronts are numbered, so it's easy enough. Just make sure that number is facing upward. I've used a piece of scrap wood to make sure that I've got a good fit with the rabbet joint. The blade is at the correct height and the stop block is in the right place. The blade I'm using has a flat ground tooth that'll give me a nice flat surface on the rabbit joints and dados. I'll remove a saw blade's width at a time until the piece dead ends into the stop block. Now I'm going to cut the dado into the drawer sides to accept the drawer backs. I'll set up a stop block and make the first cut into a piece of scrap wood and the same cut into all four drawer sides. I've made a mark on the scrap piece and I'll sneak up on the dado, readjusting the stop block with each cut once I get close. Once I have a good fit on the scrap piece, I'll finish cutting the dado in all four drawer sides. Now it's time to cut the groove to accept the drawer bottoms. Again, I'll start with a scrap piece, and with the height of the blade set at a quarter of an inch and the fence set at 5 sixteenths, I'll make one pass on the scrap piece, the drawer sides, and the drawer fronts. After making that first cut on the scrap piece and all the drawer parts, I'll move the fence over an eighth of an inch at a time until I get close to a half of an inch. That's the thickness that I'm using for the drawer bottoms. Once I've got a good fit, I'll make that same final pass on all the drawer parts. The next step is to cut the back of the drawer to length. To find that measurement, I'll measure on the inside front of the drawer 
from dado to dado, and I've got 19 and 3 eighths. Next, I'll measure the depth of the dado to accept the back of the drawer, and that's a quarter of an inch. A quarter and a quarter is a half of an inch. A half of an inch plus 19 and 3 eighths is 19 and 7 eighths. So that's my measurement. I've set up a stop block and I'll cut both drawer backs to length. Next I'll rip the back of the drawer to width and to find that measurement I'll measure from the top of the drawer to where the groove starts and that measurement is 2 and 5 sixteenths. After ripping the drawer backs to width I'll cut the drawer bottoms to size. Before I can assemble the drawers, I'll use the drill press to countersink quarter inch holes for each screw. With all the parts cut, milled, and prepped, I can finally build the drawers. I'll use a little wood glue and I'll tack the parts in place with the pin nailer. The pin nails will keep the parts from shifting around while I'm driving the screws. Before driving each screw, I'll drill a sixteenth of an inch pilot hole to direct the screw and prevent the wood from splitting. Once the drawer is assembled, I'll add a bead of glue in the groove of the drawer front, then slide the drawer bottom into place and attach it to the drawer back with four screws. The countersunk holes at the front and back of the drawer sides get filled with walnut plugs. Now that I have the drawers made, I'll make the drawer stops. These will be attached to the back of the apron, centered in the drawer opening and flush with the bottom. I'll attach the stops with a little wood glue and one inch nails. With the nails holding the stops in position, I'll add a few squeeze clamps for an hour or two. I'll be attaching the top of the desk with wooden buttons that will fit into slots made with the biscuit joiner at the front and back. The slots will allow for expansion and contraction. At the center, I'll use pocket hole screws. Note to self, it would have been much easier drilling the pocket holes before the desk was assembled. To finish the project, I clear coated the inside of the drawers and then sprayed the desk and the drawer fronts with Benjamin Moore's command, applying four coats and sanding in between coats with 320 sandpaper. I've allowed the paint to dry and now I can attach the base of the desk to the bottom of the desk top. The top of this desk is made of reclaimed white oak and I posted a separate video on how to make it last week. I'll have a link to that video in the description below. Okay, well, I'm really happy with the way the desk turned out. I know that my wife is going to love it. She's gonna really enjoy using it. And I think the barn wood top just adds so much character to this project. And I think it's gonna look great in her new office, which is a 10 by 16 shed that we have here in the backyard. And you'll be seeing more of that soon. I just made new windows for it and that's gonna be a whole project unto itself. So it's gonna be kinda of cool to see how this whole project comes together. A big thank you to Van Dyke's Restores for supporting my channel and sponsoring this project. Again, I'll have a link to the legs down in the description below. And I have the 
leg information on the plans. If you have any questions about this project, please leave them in the comments. I do plan on posting a follow-up video trying to answer some of those questions to help you along with the build. I am planning to post a separate video on turning the drawer pulls for the desk. My feeling is that part of the build comes later on, so I've got a little bit of time. I'll shoot that video and try to get it up towards the end of next week. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. If you would like my help building the furniture for your home, I hope that you'll visit my website at johnpeters.com and check out my furniture project plans. With the large variety of projects and links to the video tutorials right here on YouTube, I know that you'll find something that will inspire you to spend more time in the shop and build something beautiful for your home.